I was once a member of the U.S. aerial ski team. My dream was to make the Olympic team, but I got addicted to drugs. This is the trip drugs took me on. Prison. They call it the Devil's Playground. Assaults, rapes, beatings, stabbings. Stop right there, do not move. It could happen to you. Don't let drugs ruin your dreams. Hi, I'm Tommy Moe, 1994 Olympic gold medalist in the men's downhill. The Olympics began as a peace ceremony to bring unity and harmony during troubled times. They have since developed into an international sports competition held every four years to celebrate the human spirit. Join me and other Olympians for an insider's look into the passion, character, and spirit it takes to be an Olympian. I never thought about what winning a gold medal would bring me. I never thought about standing on the podium, getting on the podium. Any time that would come into my head, I would put that out of my head and replace it with something physical that I needed to do to get myself closer to achieving that goal. It's like a religion. It's all about perfecting that technique. It's not about beating the other guys. It's not about the money. I do love it. There's so much about it that is so perfect for me. I love shaping things, sculpting things, being an artist. The thing I like most about having won the gold is that I get to influence my sport in the direction that I think it should go. To ski at a kicker at 40 miles an hour, that's over 13 feet tall, it's 70 degrees at the top, and sends you 60 feet in the air, flipping and twisting, um, seven revolutions, three flips and four twists in less than three seconds, and come down totally in control and just be like, I got this, yahoo! No problem, that's the best. It's like determining the winner um, of a golf tournament with two golf strokes, one, two best to win. That's what our sport is like. It happens so fast. When I'm in the air, I think about as fast as when we watch it in slow motion.
I'm not even close to reaching my potential. You know, going where people haven't gone before. If I could say one thing to the world, I would say take care of our natural resources um, because it only makes sense and it's not that hard to, to recycle and to conserve water and, and paper and think about the next generation. I originally went to the 94 Olympics and the media came up to me and asked me, what are your goals here at the Olympics? I had said, well, I just want to take part and I just want to be there. And there's not one athlete that doesn't go to the Olympics that wants to medal. And that was my, that was my safety mechanism. And when I went into the 98 Olympics, I went in saying, I'm going for the gold. I'm going to do what it takes. I didn't see what any of the other girls did jumping, and when I landed my jump, a lot of people asked me, did you know you won the gold at that point? And I was so focused on what I had done, and I was so excited that I had done the best that I could do. That's all that mattered at that point. I can't help what the other athletes are doing. If someone goes out there and beats me because they had a better day, even if it's my best day, I'm still happy with it. I don't know if a gold medal has changed my life internally for what it means to me. I know that I did the best I could do. If I had the silver, I'd still be happy. But for the rest of the world, it definitely changes things. It's definitely given me a lot of opportunities and I'm thankful for those opportunities. But I don't think that I've changed as a person. I have the same values and the same things that I find important. lifelong dream and when I can have that medal now and know that there are a lot of people to help support me to get to that point it really means a lot. It was great to be able to medal at the Olympics but how much better would it be to be able to help a friend go out and do the same thing. No better person than to have Nikki helping me out. I just want to compete at my best, land two great jumps. I want to know that even if tomorrow I was to get hurt, I can walk away at least saying I was going for it. So, and that's most important to me right now. little bottled chaos and huh? there's just so many elements that are going against you and so many things that are going for you. <music> 2001 uh, national champion. It's, it's a whole build up, build up to doing a final product and it's a lot of work and preparation that comes in and a lot of you know trusting yourself to be able to do something like that.
teaching people, and he keeps teaching me. We push each other, and uh, most of the times, you know, it is an individual sport, but a lot of the times you're uh, you're at the top and you're in the finals, and there's like five jumpers left, and you and Burgess are the you know two Americans in there, and you're like, all right, Bergie, let's put it down, let's do it right here. And if he wins, cool, and uh, he's always uh, happy for me when I do when I do well as well. My biggest asset would be having to be here in Utah with family and friends, cheering, yelling making that place go crazy. It's not only gonna be great for myself, it's gonna be great for the whole US team. What does winning a gold medal mean to you? It means, it means a lot put a lot of, lot of time and effort into this sport and I've climbed the ladder from from the bottom up. Just to be able to, to say that I've, I've done this, I've done this, I started here and I've gotten all the way to here. A good way to say thank you to a lot of people that have supported me forever, you know. absolutely going with the gold in mind. But for myself, for that to happen in society, I think would give me the opportunity to reach out and touch people and give uh, the positive message that you, you can reach for your dreams and you can accomplish them. And maybe with that, I could reach 10 children. And if, with that alone, that's, that's what a gold medal means to me. The biggest mental obstacle that I face is myself. <laughs> when you know you have to push that limit and you have to, as I said before, the fear is there. You have to find that fine line of keeping that fear so you don't get hurt but also pushing it so that you can stand on that podium. I um, had major knee surgery two years ago and it was the greatest gift I ever could have been given. I realized by uh, through that process of learning to walk again and just being patient that I wasn't mogul skiing. Mogul skiing was just something I did and something I was passionate for. Even though I was judged in the sport, I didn't need to judge myself so harshly in my everyday life. I love what I do. Um, I train my butt off in the summer. You've got to push it and you've got to go for it. Every year everyone's getting so much faster and jumping so much bigger so you just have to trust yourself. If I could say one thing to the world I would say slow down and enjoy life because it is short and it's easy to get wrapped up in our own little 
dilemmas, but there's so much out there and there's so much to smile about. Hi, I'm Tommy Moe, 1994 Olympic gold medalist in the downhill and silver medalist in the Super G. For me, winning the Olympics was something that I'd always dreamed about. I grew up skiing in Montana, and I remember when I was a really young kid, my dad was like, yeah, I hope someday that you or Mike, my brother, could compete in the Olympics. And, and uh, I remember watching Franz Klammer win in 76, and then 1980, Leonard Stock, and then Bill Johnson in 1984, and 1988 was Perman Zubrigan, and then 1992 was Patrick Ortlieb, and then 1994, Tommy Moe. So, I trained really hard. I made the US Ski Team 86, and the emotion that goes into all the hard work and effort, and then finally getting on top of that podium and, you know, his hands up above your head, just saying, hey, I'm the fastest man on this day. And it's really hard to explain, but the best way that I can explain it is that you're 100 times happier than your happiest day. It's a huge victory for everybody, a lot of your coaches and teammates, and but it's something that, that nobody can ever take away from you. It's something that I worked really hard for and, and uh, I'll have it for the rest of my life. We went to the opening ceremonies together in Lillehammer and it was cool, you know, we had our Stetson cowboy hats on and all our U.S. Olympic Committee clothing and we're cruising up there and this guy hits the ski jump, you know, in the dark with the torch. And, and some guy takes an arrow and shoots it above the torch and the thing goes off. And, and then uh, it was the night before the downhill and I was all wound up. Like. Not only was he excited because he was racing the next day, he'd just been in the opening ceremonies and he was freaking out. And uh, he was like, you know, I think I could do really well tomorrow. You know, I, I think if I could get top six and if I could do this and oh, that'd be great. And da 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 da, you know. And I was, oh, Megan, oh God, I've got to race tomorrow and I got fourth today and I can win. And, what should I do? And I was freaking out. She's like, tell me. She I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And uh, we'd been working all year on um, trying to only think of the things that um, we could control. You know, I was like, you're thinking about what, how you're going to finish and you haven't even started the race yet. You know, I was like, you can only think about what you're going to do on the course. She just told me, she just like said, mellow out. Just think about what's going to make you go fast. Just remember your outside skiing hands forward. And don't think about what place you're going to get or who you're going to be. I was just like, whew, whew, okay, cool. I'll just think about that. And she was a huge part of it. I mean, because if I didn't have somebody tell, tell me that the night before, I probably would have choked. So I was, too, I was too wound up. And sometimes your coaches can't really relay that kind of a message to you. It wasn't a real long conversation, but he definitely, like, stopped tweaking out. <laughs> and... Uh... And he definitely like settled down a little bit, which was nice to see. <laughs> so I was a little concerned. <laughs> I attribute a lot of my success just to my my personality and the fact that I kind of grew up in a in like a blue collar environment. My dad was a construction worker, and he was a you know ski bum in Montana, a ski patrolman, and you know my dad would dump us off at the skier and we'd ski all day and show up at four. And, I had a lot of adversity growing up, and I was a troublemaker. I got kicked off the U.S. ski team when I was 16 for partying. And I'm the type of person where I almost need to get beat up a few times before I learn my lesson, and that's what happened. And uh, you know, whether it was in my personal life, just maturing to where I knew what, where the right place and the right time was for those things, and then training was the other facet, and then. Um, going to the Olympics in 92 and getting smoked, getting 20th place my best finish and then 
you know, my dad was there and he was kind of bummed out and gave me the cold shoulder. And it was just like, next time I come back, I'm gonna kick ass. And, you know, I did. I it totally I needed it. I just needed to get beat up before I figured out what was important. And I think that's important in anything in your life is to make a few mistakes before you get it right. That's the word. And it's gnarly. I mean, you can die out there. There's a lot of speed, a lot of centrifugal forces going on, a lot of physics. You know, you're going down and you're basically cheating gravity. When you load that ski up and put it on reverse camber, you, you drop in and it's the only way you're going to win is if you take the most risk going into the fall line. And sometimes you don't make it and end up hitting the net. And uh, I've had some friends die ski racing and I've seen a lot of really nasty injuries. And luckily I didn't really have any career enders. I've blown out both my knees and uh, in different accidents that weren't that bad, but uh, it's the coolest feeling in the world though, being a World Cup downhiller is, is you are your own sports car. I mean, you got these two planks on your feet, you got a downhill suit on, you got your helmet, and uh, you're basically, you just go out there and drive your own race as fast as you can. And It's a brilliant course, though. Bernard Roussi's designed uh, the past 10 or 15, you know, world-class downhills that have been developed in the world, and uh, they're just getting more gnarly and demanding. I mean, he's got jumps and fallaways and uphill jumps, I guess, that send you 20 feet in the air, and and you know, wicked fallaway turns. And hey, the athletes are getting better, the skis are getting better. Why not? My name is Megan Garrity. I'm originally from Anchorage, Alaska. The more aggressive you ski, the less bad things can happen to you. So you pretty much just try to get really aggressive. <laughs> I think the downhill course is uh, pretty much nothing like it. Sometimes the fear factor is a little bit high, so you, you're not real sure if you want to go, but once you get down, you, of course you want to go again. And... The adrenaline rush is pretty high, and uh, I'm an adrenaline junkie, so <laughs> I like it. give you such positive energy, you know, you just feel great afterwards. When I first went on the World Cup, I got fifth place in the downhill. It wasn't easy to, to come back from and, and be satisfied with ninth or tenth, or which is a great finish on the World Cup, and you, you just, you become really hard on yourself. So I didn't grow up, you know, dreaming of a gold medal as far as I can remember. And so I don't have that like maybe some other people do. It's something that as I've gotten better, I'm like, wow, maybe, maybe I could get a medal. Sure, gold is the best, especially in the American eye, but um, I'm not gonna get overly picky about it. Live for the moment, you know? You never know what's gonna happen tomorrow, so don't wait for till tomorrow to do something, do it today.
World Championships in Birches Garden, Germany. Um, since then, I've placed in the top 10 numerous times, and I just got back from Valle Nevado, Chile, where I got a fifth place at the first World Cup. You know, you learn every trick by progression for the most part. You first learn a straight over backflip, and then you learn how to throw a half twist into it. And then you're throwing a 360 into it, and then you kind of flip less and spin more, and you turn into a 720 that doesn't quite get upside down. And then it just takes a little bit, you know, as many attempts as you can get in there until you're comfortable enough to add another 180. It's basically an ongoing process. It's, it's unlike anything else because you're going down the hill and back and forth across the hill and you have the sensation of going straight up and falling straight down and at the same time speed it throughout the middle. So be fast and be able to go high and flip and spin. It's a lot of fun. The gold medal is just after a series of really big steps, the final uh, end all goal for competitive sports, any kind of sport for the most part. So it'd be very cool to be able to have everything fall into place and the hard work and the training pay off and be able to stand on that podium. That'd be a, an incredible euphoric experience for me, definitely. I'll just try to relax out there because that's the only thing I'm gonna be able to do to perform my best. So that's my focus mentally for next year. It's, letting everything go that I have no control over. The Olympics are all about everybody coming together in a very friendly environment you know, of competition and, you know, kind of a world brotherhood. And it's kind of all about peace, the Olympic Games. man, especially on a big hill, you get out in the air there and you're 20 feet off the ground, nothing but your skis holding you up, and it feels like, you know, the hand of God just lifting you by the seat of the pants, and, uh, you know, you're not coming down, you know it, it's like the ride of your life. It's such a mental sport that, uh, you know, you have, you have to really be on top of your game to be able to stick with the same thing over and over and over and uh, just get down to the little tiny details. On most jumps, there's usually a second or two when I just kind of go over my head. Now, is my binding really gonna stay on? And are my tips gonna stay up? And am I really gonna do it right? Or is this just gonna be that one jump that you know, I mess up on? And uh, kind of go over that in my head, a little checklist, make sure I'm still with it. And, and shrug it off, and the coach says, go, so you go. You can't be scared, I mean, you show you're scared, that's the end. The more you fly, the happier you are. I had the opportunity and I went for it. Ended up jumping uh, 210, my first jump, back ski flying. So it was a great, uh, great boost for 
myself and I think hopefully the whole U.S. jumping program. The goal of that has seemed to get closer and closer, more obtainable due to some coaches and uh, these ski jumps and uh, an opportunity to get a lot more training consistently throughout the whole, the whole year. Ski jumping is, is pretty young in the U.S., so uh, a lot of people don't expect a whole lot from us, but I know myself and I think some other jumpers know that it's possible to, to break through the field and, and get to the top. Uh, it's going to take a lot, of, a lot of training and a lot of uh, focus, but it can be done. This is the kind of course where you have to be aggressive. You have to think drive, drive, and if there's air, you have to think fly. I've been on top for a long time, and, and now I, I feel like I'm chasing the pack again. I think that everybody feels like they're chasing somebody, and that's what the sport's all about. And the way I look at it is my past results are in the past. You know, I, you're only, you're hardly as good as your last win. You're only as good as your next win. I was in a ski accident in 1988, and uh, I had grown up ski racing, but it wasn't a, uh, a racing accident. It was just free skiing, and uh, I just hooked an edge the wrong way and went over a cat track and did a back backflip off of it and landed on my shoulders. I think a lot of people talk about overcoming injury, and I'm not sure that you really had overcome any of that. I think that you just learn new ways of doing things and experience life with a different perspective. I've run into some of the most incredible people through disabled sports, and disabled elite athletics is, um, you know, ha have really broadened my perspective on on life in general. And it makes you feel good about sharing a piece of the Olympics. You know that the Olympics and the Paralympians are very much together.
Oh man, it's you know I I love it. Downhills downhills my event. You know. Well, I moved to Tahoe in 1992, and we had uh, an incredible season. Um, you know, just got five or 600 inches of snow that winter. Um, and I had been jumping off everything in sight. On... And then the next season rolled around, and a bunch of my friends moved out to Tahoe to live with me. And the first big five foot storm, I went and took them to a 30 footer that I had been jumping off previously the last winter. And on my way off the cliff, um, my board grabbed some rocks and I got pitched over the falls. And when I landed, I landed inverted and uh, scorpioned and uh, hyperextended my lower back and broke it in two places and was uh, basically instantly paralyzed right down there. I knew that I definitely wanted to sit ski. I, you know, I had see, seen some pictures of when I was in rehab and stuff, um, trying to get back, you know, you know back together healthy-wise. You know, it's taken a couple seasons. And then come way out. Wow. I'm just around. afraid I'm going to get a little light off that thing and lose all my direction. But basically, you know? however you do it, you just need to make sure you're on that red gate. Two, three. And then if you guys want to speed it back up, I'll do it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. No problem. It's, it's great. I mean, I, I think I'm a better skier now on my sit ski than I was when I was snowboarding. Don't pity us. <laughs> Don't pity, oh, we're not poor disabled skiers. I mean, you know, a couple of us truly rip. I mean, you know, we can, we can ski the steeps in the powder just as good as almost anybody else, you know? Love. Olympus game is something, uh, is a dream. Calgary 88, uh, yeah, first Olympus game. I won two gold. That was amazing. That was, uh, it was play. Uh, I was young. All the people expect to win, Alberto. In Albertville, 92. Yeah, a lot of responsibility. Yeah, all the press behind me, stress also. I won again, gold medal, silver. Was great also, 92. <laughs> My heart, <laughs> yeah, was, you know, was nervous. It was uh, the first night, the, the night before the race. You know, Olympus game is uh, all the people watching you, all the world. It's not easy, but I won third medal, gold medal. <laughs> right. Talk about 94. <laughs> Silver medal in Iliamer. Talk about Nagano. 98. <laughs> yeah. 
98 was uh, just to try the first Olympics. And bad in GS, yeah, I fell down, I fell in GS. Olympics game bring, uh, bring peace. It bring already peace. All the people, when they're watching Olympics game, they, they change in their the minds. Enjoy your life. I love you. <laughs>